Good evening, everyone. Hello, hey, Troy, guys. Anthony, Ernest. Hello. Happy New Year. 2020. Yay. We made it, guys. <laughs> Randall, hi. How are you? Thanks for tuning in to Couch Time. We're going to let a few more people chime in and we're going to get started. Yes. Yes. Hello, Clarence. Hey, cuz. Hey, Deb. From Louisiana. Hey. It's always good to see Van Juan. Nothing wrong with him. He is. They always support you. Hope you guys had an awesome New Year's and festive Christmas. Right. And we took a little break because you Yes. Know. Ooh, it's good to break. I'm telling you. I love you out on the couch, but hey, it is good to break. And the bad thing about it is, you know, we are chocolate people. So when we break, <laughs> we break. We break. <laughs> it took what, a week and a half? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Tried to fill you guys in with some, some repeats or some... Um, yeah, so, so my oldies were goodies. Yes, but it's nothing like being here on the couch with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How, how many you want to wait for? Give me a wait till we get to 10. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Amber. Hey, how are you and the kids? Welcome to the couch. New year. New, was it new you, new, new? New me? New you? New you? Yes, yes. New decade. <laughs> it's time to reset. Come yes. on, y'all. Let's reset. Okay, it's okay. declining now. Okay. Okay. So, well, oh, wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey Crystal, how are you doing? Family, I'm sorry. I have to always acknowledge family. Hey, Chris, how are you doing, girl? Welcome to Couch Time today. What is today? Today is January the sixth. The six sixth days into the twenty twenty new, new decade. <laughs> the first week. I mean, we are so elated. We have a lot of good things lined up for you this upcoming year, and we're just so happy that you are a part of our Couch Time family right. today. Oh, let me give you the disclaimer. Okay, gotta do it. Um. I'm L.A. Parker. And I'm Valley Girl T. And you ha this is Couch Time. We are a psych real life uh, discussion show that talks about real life. Talk about uh, challenges that you may have that you might not even uh, be aware of or how to, to deal with it. So we bring in the psychological component and try to interpret it, you know, tr interpret it for you in like... And I try to interpret it and give you a real A realistic. So, you know, <laughs> what's she talking about? Well, she's going to well, interpret it. What, <laughs> what she said was. <laughs> so, we're going to, you know, we, we come straight from the DSM, which is the Psychology Bible. We also give you a twist of our, our spiritual insight, mm -hmm. our uh, real life insight, our, our, our experiences, our educational perspective. We give you all of that good stuff, boiled all down and good old gumbo. <laughs> yeah so that is what we do we cannot give you any type of legal or medical advice though however you can send us an email you can inbox us you know, some of your challenges and we will work things through for you we are both life coaches as well as again I am a PhD student uh, post student uh, DSM I mean uh, ABD which means I'm doing my dissertation I'll be using you for my research <laughs> love you <laughs> so uh, with that being said uh, today we are uh, going to talk about something really really important it's called the Stockholm syndrome mm -hmm. hey Carissa hey Richard just had to, I'm sorry just had to throw those things out <laughs> today uh, today's show is brought to you by some of our sponsors, uh, Styles by Kaylin. Okay, she is my stylist. Mm -hmm. Look at the lovely hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Just Be Beauty. Just Be Beauty. She uh, uh, is one of our preferred vendors and she does lipstick, lipstick, and uh, 
She is, uh, again, a preferred, uh, one of our preferred providers. So mm -hmm. if you are into the health and beauty thing, she has non-toxic um, lip, lip, lip gloss. Lip, lip products. Okay. And it works, guys. It stays on all Yes, day. yes. I have the neutral on now. That's why I don't look like I have any on because it's neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, hair, um, human hair uh, is brought to you by... Foreign Hair Affairs. So for all of your human hair needs, for those of you ladies who uh, do purchase human hair, Foreign Hair Affair. You can look them up online as well. So, uh, what, wait a minute. Let's go into them cowboys. What? Um, what? Them cowgirls? <laughs> of course, they're not playing anymore because they keep losing. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but... They have let Jason Garrett go. Yes, they have. Hey, Paco. I'm sorry. No shout out. You know, when, when we live, we record a lot of our shows. So when we're live, I just can't help but to give you guys, my family, shout out. So I'm sorry. Uh, but we're talking about them cowgirls. Uh, yes, we have um, had a change in management. Finally. Finally. We have not had a Super Bowl ring since the 90s. Come on. And that ain't hating on your cowgirls. That's the truth. And that's what we love and God loves too. So we are trying to say we need, you know, we, we need some more, some fresh meat to, yes. to help us get there. Okay. So helping us get there. Now we're looking at uh, some a few prospects. A few prospects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't say it, but we know that there's a buzz about them bringing on uh, a college coach. Mm -hmm. I think a college coach is, is probably a better fit than one of the current NFL coaches because we know... Hey, honey. You know, that's what happens on married folks. You know, she coming home. It's all right. Mess up my cowboy spiel. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Hey, Stringer Bell. Anyway. Um, so, again, uh, we know Jerry has control issues. And not too yes. many uh, um, NFL uh, proficient and proven um, coaches are going to deal with Jerry's uh, control issues. He's so aggressive. They're going to want to be able to take that team and really take them to the next level. And they're not going to be able to do that with him being coach, general manager, masseuse. Okay. <laughs> Not gonna happen. It's, it's not gonna happen. So, yeah. um, so, we, so we really do prefer. You know, he's gonna probably get um, a coach that is is uh, collegiate, and which is not a, a really really bad thing. The thing about it is, like they were looking at Ohio's coach. Ohio's coach is really good. I mean, he's proven himself. However, mm -hmm. why would you leave a good position where you're comfortable? Everybody loves you. You're doing your thing. Yeah, go make a couple more million dollars. Money time. But in the next couple of years, you're going to be back trying to get your old position back because you and Jerry going to bump heads. Maybe. Maybe he changed. You know, he getting a little older. I was born by the river. <laughs> Look, change ain't coming with Jerry's world. Look. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not. He look, he's too old to change. He looked like a Tales from the Crypt. You know who Jerry really looked like? I'm going to tell you. Look, this is who Jerry really looked like. Knock me if I'm wrong, you guys. Y'all remember Polar Guys? Yes, I know I do. God is in the temple. <laughs> The Lord is it. But you know that man walk around with the black hat. He looked just like that man. Tales from the crypt. Look, he, he got one leg in the grave. Who gonna be running that team is Little Jerry. And Little Jerry is a businessman. He makes yes. business decisions. He makes decisions that is going to impact the team's financial bottom line. Not so much even the team. The franchise is what Little Jerry is more concerned about. Little Jerry didn't play ball. Well. Now, Big Jerry did play ball, so he does have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. But Lil Jerry, Lil Jerry is 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 scheduling this money. Baby, Lil Jerry is <laughs> scheduling WWE at the arena. He's scheduling mm -hmm. Garth Brooks at the arena. Little Jerry is, is is making money moves, as your little girl say. What's her name? Little Cardi, Cardi, Cardi B. Making yeah, money moves. moves. Yeah, Lil Jerry making money moves. He's not as focused as on so much team moves as he is franchise moves. So, 
We never know what's going to happen. So, you know, all you cowboys fans, you probably want to go and put some, get those steel <laughs> knee pads down and pray oh, that no. Big Jerry, <laughs> that Big Jerry, hold on a couple of more years. You Because you know what? I, I say that once Big Jerry uh, kicked the bucket, then y'all gonna get y'all Super Bowl ready. You watch. You oh, watch what I say. I ain't oh, wishing nothing. Me. I ain't wishing nothing on the man, but I'm just saying. Look. <laughs> String a bell. Hopefully, Mike McCarthy uh, can get the Cowboys over the hump and a Super Bowl uh, win. Uh, did McCarthy turn down the job? Well, you know what? It was just. He hadn't, they hadn't offered it him to yet formally. They hadn't Not offered it him, it to him yet. Um, you know, but then again, you always know that Jerry always got some stuff up under the sleeve. So he was probably yeah. talked to McCarthy before he even fired Jerry because that just happened, you know. So we don't know. Uh, Jones is sick. Jones real oh. sick. I, I told y'all he's sick. He looked like, you know, his face all stuck in. You know, I know he ain't chocolate. But you know how chocolate people is when we get sick. I think sinking. His face just sinking and stuff. He looked like he been sick for a long time. So I agree with you, John. Yeah, he might got some issues that they ain't just exposed. Because when you got money, you can hide some things. You don't have to be exposed in all your secrets. So I kind of agree with you. Hey, hey, Belle. This might be a Belle. Hey, Belle. Okay, so... We have talked about them cowboys. Um, I'm sorry, cowboys. cowboys. Okay, we've talked about them cowboys, and uh, we also have. Uh, give me what, what's the weather? Uh, here in Dallas, Texas, it's 56 degrees. Okay, I mean the weather is up and down. Yes, it was yes, cold this yes, morning. Yes. To me, it was, and now it's 56. So. If you are in the DF DFW area, the only thing that you need to know is gonna rain on Friday. That's what you need to know. It's going to Get rain. rain. It's going to rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to rain Friday, okay? So, with that being said, let's jump into the topic today. Today's psych topic is the Stockholm Syndrome. Uh-huh. Stockholm Syndrome. Um, we're going to give you some scenarios of what that looks like. And I'm going to give you a definition of what that is. And I'm going to also give you some examples on how you can recognize it in someone that you may know. Okay? Um, Stockholm Syndrome is, is a psychological response wherein the captive begins to identify closely with his captors, uh, as well as their agenda and demands. Okay, so let's break that down. You want to break it down, Paul, since you're the break it down or upper <laughs> person? <laughs> Basically, somebody, the abuser, um, the abusee becomes attached to that person and they don't want to let go. Yes. So, the abuser, the, the, we talking about the victim Mm -hmm. and the predator. Okay. Mm -hmm. When the victim becomes attached to the predator, then sometimes they become a part of the problem uh, versus the solution, okay? And we see this all the time. We see victims who uh, mourn uh, when they get out of that victimization um, situation. We see victims feel bad because this person is going through something. Regardless that this person has abused them or treated them badly or whatever. The, the, the dictionary content says uh, a captor. So they, they're giving you a scenario where there is someone who is um, kidnapped and captivated. Uh, however, th- this is really just talking about predators and uh, the person who actually... Uh, is the abuser and the abusee. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the victim person who, who who victimizes and the person who is the victim. So with all that being said, the victim attaches to the person who is victimizing them mm-hmm. and, be, and obtains an emotional connection to them. Now, I don't know if uh, you remember some time ago where uh, there was... A group of young ladies who had been uh, kidnapped Mm -hmm. and they became attached to their um, kidnapper. 
uh, and the kid never had actually had children with them. Well, at least with one of them. And when he died uh, due to, um, he committed suicide in prison, uh, the, the one who had children with him actually was mourning him. And everyone couldn't understand why she mourning him. He raped and beat and then impregnated her over a 10-year period. Why would she feel any type of remorse at all? Um, and, and the reason that is, is because um, the, uh, this Stockholm Syndrome. They become attached to the predator. Um, Stringer Bell. They say some of the young ladies involved um, in the R. Kelly fiasco has Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, this is a um, good example. I did not watch uh, the part five, Surviving R. Kelly, uh, mm -hmm. last week. I didn't. I was probably R. Kellyed out. <laughs> I was just look, I was one of us over it, it already, <laughs> right over it. And and I'm sorry, we'll get back to that. But when you have the victims on TV on an award show, smiling and celebrating, receiving an award for a documentary, that gives me some impression about their victimization. Maybe uh, it just didn't feel too right, right? Okay, so not a fan of surviving R. Kelly. Now, um, but there is possible that uh, he, some of the people that he did have encounters with or, or would be considered victims became attached to him. Uh, we're looking at the two young ladies that was, his, that was there last with him that have now flipped the script mm -hmm. um, and, and, and are trying to publish books and, and so forth. Making money off of it. Yeah, so... Uh, Again, these are people, when you have the Stockholm Syndrome, these are people who have emotionally uh, attached themselves to um, their predator. Um, this happens a lot. You have some uh, examples? No, just an example of, like, just a scenario. A young girl, been abused for years, um, stays with a man, and decides, you know, there's no other way out. He beats her, he... Talks to her bad and, you know, family members, we try to help them and they just keep coming back. So that's like a big example of what Stockholm Syndrome is. And I believe that the Stockholm Syndrome is probably one of the underlining causes that people really don't help people like they used to. No. Uh, back in the day, you know, people were, you know, they were... It takes a village. Yes, it, it yeah. takes a village. And if you saw someone being abused, you would help them. Mm -hmm. However, we have, we all have known someone who have been in an abusive situation or being a bad situation, and you help them. You don't got all bruised, and you yeah. don't you don't you fighting them you're off fighting and all of that. Yeah, and you're fine you know, to hide <laughs> all of that, and then they go right, right back. back because they have gotten attached to, and they are have become used to uh, mm -hmm. that negative that 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 behavior mm -hmm. they have gotten accustomed to it um oh goodness okay <laughs> so um so th that is what the stockholm syndrome is and you may identify it and notice it uh, a lot and again I i've seen uh, with family members and mm -hmm. friends where you have people who um are attached to their abuser um, I, I, I really don't know. When people have that type of, of situation where they're attached to their abuser, uh, the only thing that you can do uh, other than pray for them is give them some resources, mm -hmm. okay? And so we here on the couch, we are a resource. So you can always refer them to the um, couch time inbox and we will make sure that they get uh, re numbers that can help them. We can, they can get um, resources, help, resources psychological help, mm -hmm. um, people who can who can help them through their situation. Now, to be to be honest, it's very very little that you can do because even mm -hmm. professionals, people go back after having hours and hours of counseling and therapy. People will go back to a bad situation. Because they become attached to it. Okay? So, but what we can do is we can prepare them. So, when they are ready, they, have the they can make, yes, they can make that that conscious and that, that wise de decision be based on information that they have.
They know that they're not alone mm -hmm. and that, again, that there are resources out there for them. Yeah. Good, good family. Good info, guys. Okay, so look that up. Again, look up the Stockholm Syndrome. It is spelled S-T-O-C-K-H-O-L-M, like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, that is uh, what we got for you today. Yeah. That's okay. pretty much it. So, um, don't forget to visit our website. www.couchtime that's with the Y, T-Y-M-E dot com. Um, also, you can uh, email us at uh, couchtimes with an S at gmail dot com. Uh, you can always reach out to us on um, Facebook. Instagram. Our yeah, Look, we want each and every one of you to go and subscribe on our YouTube page, okay? Go subscribe. We want we want to see you there. And um, on the side of that, look, remember, when life is challenging mm -hmm. and too much for you, just press pause and reset, okay? Mm -hmm. Press pause, reset. That's, a, that's our motto for 2020. We want everyone to press pause and repeat. Yes. <laughs> oh, and don't forget to uh, order our throws. Yes. Um, inbox yeah. us. And order a uh, couch time throw. We will see you next week. Same, same place. Time. Same Yes. On the couch. On the couch. Bye, guys.